Hey, this is Keith Ball from Bikernet.com. We're here at the AMD affiliate show at the Milwaukee 2012 rally. And I have the pleasure to talk to Gio Giovanni. Yes, sir, how are you doing today? <laughs> good, good. You, uh, you uh, are part of uh, the family operation of Blacksmith Motoring. Uh, you're based in Las Vegas and Illinois. Um, it's a family operation. How long has it been going? Uh, we've been around for about 25 years. Um, it's always been a family operation from my grandfather down to me. Uh, it was passed down to me to try to bring in the motorcycle division a little bit more into because we always did all we always did auto, uh, but the motorcycle division now takes about 80 percent of our business now. How did you uh, shift from motorcycles to auto? Was there any uh, <laughs> any like family squabbles in that? No, well, it, it, I tried to do it in 95, it was family squabbles, um, but come down to the recession, uh, it just turned out to be a very easy move for us. We found that the trend for uh, restoring cars and low riders and things like that with the shift in the recession, you can get more bang for your butt with the motorcycles. So that argument became pretty easy with my grandfather for that, <laughs> real easy, real quick. <laughs> Well, you know, it's, uh, I, I find it fascinating because the motorcycle business in 2008, 2009 pretty much tanked. Uh, a lot of shops went away, um, but there's a lot more people driving cars than there are motorcycles. Yeah, but I think that disposable income when it comes to the guy that, you know, you throw 30 grand into a car, you kind of not see anything. You throw it into a bike, you had his work of art. And I think now people just, they've worked so hard for so long and they save their money up and they're not spending that. You get to that, I mean, we're in America. You get to that explosive bubble, you just gotta spend. And I just think the guys are saying they get more out of it. And plus the bike, it's a luxury, but the same took is functional. You get better gas mileage. There's a lot more pluses to having a full custom bike than having a car. That's a very interesting analogy to that. Um, and this bike is an amazing, <laughs> I know it has an amazing story behind it. Uh, tell us about how it got started and... Well, it was a bad bet gone wrong, of course. Um, we were getting ready for the AMD World Championship for 2011. I had one bike entered. Uh, I just wanted to bring two, just because that's how kind of we are at, at our shop, always over the top. And someone presented me the idea that I could do the what they consider the not most appealing bike. <laughs> yeah, it's the easy way to say it, not most appealing bike in the country at the time, and they said, on the going. And I'm thinking, new going. I'm like, well, that's like a mothership. I mean, he was like, no, 76 or like 80s. So I saw it, I'm like, well, if you can find me the bike, we'll do it. And three days later, she showed up. And I'm looking at the bike, and everybody's kind of laughing. I sat in the shop for almost about, about two, three weeks in the corner. And then I woke up three o'clock in the morning, came in the shop, started sketching, and before you knew it, you got Elva Carroll. <laughs> This thing is absolutely amazing. Um, I, we could spend days talking about this motorcycle, but now most of the bikes you customize, are they Harley? No, actually um, our shift changed about four years ago to, to metrics. We still do Harleys. Harleys probably calculate about 10% of our business now. Um, the other is all metric. Uh, we specialize, most of our bikes you are seeing come in a more Yamaha based, Suzuki being second, Honda being, being third. Um, but the fact that we manufacture all our own parts kind of gives us an advantage of working on metric bikes because within a metric bike platform, you can have three or four different sub-models that nothing fits and cross the board. Like Harley, a lot of stuff can cross-mingle between models. Metrics don't do that. But having the capacity to be able to make the parts, readjust mounts like that has been kind of a success source with us with the metric bikes. Well, let's talk about this bike a little bit because it's it's not only custom, it's it's uh, performance, there's, there's just so many aspects in it, and there's so many aspects of it that you guys handle in your own shop. Um, so let's, uh, let's kind of take it from, from the, uh, well, let's talk about performance first. Tell me about it. Okay, it, it has a, it's a GO1000 base motor, but it's been stroked out at 1200 cc. It's running the Eaton Supercharger on it nitrous, so we're seeing about 230 horsepower to the rear wheels out of it. Um, it's a reliable bike put like almost 10 grand miles on it. Uh, believe it or not, I do consider it a daily rider. Um, all our bikes are considered daily rider no matter how fancy they get. Um, it's got our air suspension in the back. It's got progressive performance front suspension. So we can put the power to the pavement and ride it very comfortably. I've had the bike up to about 150 miles an hour until I start lifting off the seat because the seating of it is more, I call it postman delivery seating. So it really in the pegs to hold on to when you're, when you're going down. 
Um, but it's super fast bike, super comfortable. Uh, it's got a 21 inch front wheel, 18 inch rear, and it buries that 160 tire and smoke when you get on it. And Chip from CCS Chopper did a quad exhaust. Um, I wanted to make sure that we can get that supercharger moving the air out of it. And then you put the little flappers on the end so you get the little ping, ping, ping when you, when you sit at the light. But we are performance based. All our bikes are based on performance first. Then I work back into the cosmetics. So it's a really, it's a hoot to ride. Tell me about um, the, all the, uh, the, the abilities you guys, including powder coating, you can do at your own shop. Uh, we cover everything from making our own fenders, our own bodywork, paint, graphics. Um, all we have two uh, submachine shops um, that we can make all on parts, make all on, on mounts. We can turn down all on parts, like some parts on the vintage bikes you can't really find anymore. We can turn them down and still make them look unique. We have total powder coating capability. Uh, one thing you'll see for us coming for 20, uh, 2012 and 2013 will be we'll have engravable powder coating where instead of doing the thin lines, you'll actually be able to do the hand deep engraving like you see on Pacero now with the copper overlay to do the diamond cut without chipping the powder coating. Um, we have full capabilities to do copper and chrome plating there uh, and do our own motor work. So basically between both our locations and our six sub locations of our company, because our company does do other things, uh, we're capable to keep a bike in house and complete it in about five months. That's amazing. Tell us, uh, uh, tell us about the engraving. The engraving is handled by a, a relative. Right? Yep, that is my cousin Easy Garcia. Uh, he's out of out of Texas. Um, he has been doing low riders for over 30 years. Um, Easy, I just can't say too much about him. Everything that we do has some type of engraving that is is coming from him. Uh, he's got a, probably about two three hundred hours in that whole bike total. He got it done in less than two months before the AMD because, of course, me being last minute Lucy, I called him. I was like, man, you know, I'm really envisioning engraving on the bike. And he's sitting there like, really? I'm like, yeah. He said, how long I have? I was like, yeah, like a month and a half. So we laid out everything in there with copper. Um, but it's really cool because I'm Colombian, so he bought a lot of our Latin lowrider heritage into it. But then the same token, he put a lot more spice into it to bring like an old English appeal to some of the, some of the um, hand engraving in it. But dynamite, and the thing I love about it is it's always crisp. He does really crisp lines, it's very proportional, um, but I think it really highlights the bike really well. It absolutely does. Um, is this uh, copper plating or is it uh, copper plate that's been engraved? Some, some of the parts are copper. That particular piece is all copper. Um, some of the other parts are copper and engraving. We add a special mixture to our copper though because we own a jewelry company, Flax of the Company. So I deal with rose gold a lot. So we add a different tint to our copper that helps it out so it doesn't tarnish as quickly, but it gives it a rose gold look instead of that more um, bright, brilliant, orangey copper. It darkens it up a little bit. So a lot of people just think it's rose gold, which is great because that's what I was shooting for. And that's kind of been my signature on the bikes we've been doing lately. Now tell us about the flappers. You said that's your, sort of your namesake to motorcycles. Yeah, it, it has become, um, I guess, a trademark for me with the flappers. Uh, Chip and CCS Chopper exhaust, real good friend of mine, does all my exhaust. Uh, we do co-designing of it. Uh, one great thing about it is that the flappers go intermittently because it's, because it's a four-cylinder, and I mean, they just ping it to light. And I love it. I know it's an old John Deere trucker, trucker thing, but I do love it to death. Um, and I just like the sound of it, because people think it's something wrong with the motor. Yeah. They always look like, what's wrong with your motor? I'm like, it's the exhaust, man. it's the <laughs> exhaust. And when you really get on a throttle, you just see all of them just do, we call it Superman, they just go straight out. Yeah. They never pop back in, but now that's all, that's been on all our bikes lately, to, is a signature for me, and uh, they're all hand engraved by Easy again, too. But Chip did a dynamite um, layout on it. We don't do baffles, we tune all the exhaust for the motor. And um, I mean, they're like a quad, flattened out, almost like a Corvette muffler that he did. So I fell in love with it, with the quads on it. Well, this is an amazing motorcycle, and I appreciate your time here. I appreciate you bringing your bike down for the show, and, and I'll see you at the Artistry and Iron yes, in, sir, in, in Vegas. Right. That's right, Artistry and Iron. I'll see you there. Good, to, good to talk to you.